right, hello and welcome everyone to Star Ladder Season 11. Another day of European games. Hopefully they're actually going to happen today. I know we had a bit of a disaster yesterday. Also, I've brought on maybe a good luck charm. Blaze is here with me today and I am Helium. How you doing? Doing good, man. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see what is going to be in this new era of Dota 2. We go out into the summit, we come out of it a little wiser as to the metagame and uh, diversity of the hero pool, but I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, maybe a little bit of land play gradually showing its symptoms, but uh, still good for some casts here and looking forward to seeing these games in action. Um, the Elder Titan, the Ogre, they were really kind of the standouts of the summit. They were very, very involved and yeah, I mean, they obviously just have a lot of potential. They're very durable heroes. They're not easy to pick off, and uh, you just don't want to commit the damage resources to bring them down in a fight. So they're going to st be there to stay. They're going to be dishing out the damage, whether through the, the burst and over time at magical damage or just the amplification effects of that natural order. So very powerful combos in work. Could see something like an Ember Spirit be picked up next for Virtus Pro if they do want to go for something flashy. It does work well with setting up a couple of ET's abilities with those steering chains. Yeah, well looking back, I was checking out what the teams have been picking along with some of their heroes. Looking at the Elder Titan for Virtus Pro. Uh, not a big surprise, they've gone with the Phantom Assassin. I mean, the armor is gone, you've got the crits. It looks like this game though, they're going to be picking up that Slark third and already over on the side of X game. They've gone for Ogre, great support, obviously very popular. Batrider, pretty good in the offlane, pretty hard to shut down. You can go to the jungle and looking to get their push started, they've picked up a Lycan third for themselves. Yep, so they've already got a lot of stuff that goes through Magic community here. They've got obviously the right-click damage from the Lycan throw. Half of the Necrobooks effects will go right on through Magic community as well. So and it's going to be kind of irrelevant whether or not, not Slark picks up a BKB early on. The Batrider... Lasso, of course, will pierce through, but generally speaking, a good Slark is going to be able to avoid that with the Dark Pact. If he's quick on the reflexes, that Rider during the animation might be thwarted, and uh, he might even dispel a Lasso or two. Either way, in the laning phase, he's going to have a great time because the Napalm is a really big aspect of Batrider's laning, and Slark just takes that off readily. So, he's going to have himself a good time, but the Lycanthrope was picked up in reaction to him, so they're not afraid of the, like, the blink pounce to lock down the Lycan. They'd say... Even if I'm chained, even if I'm leashed, I'm still going to be able to do a lot of work. And the, the Weaver, to a similar extent. I mean, both of them want to be running around at 522 or 625 movement speed. But uh, at the same time, they're durable enough that if the, the pounce, the Dream Coil goes through for an extended duration, they might still be able to pull through. Yeah, and at least Weaver now has time lapse. So if you do get locked down, you can just press the panic button. Ultimate for Weaver. Get out of dodge, and well, it's going to be some split push there from the Weaver and from the Lycan. We'll see how they want to lane it. Probably Weaver moving into the safer off lane, perhaps Lycan towards the middle lane. As Virtus Pro, they ban out Ancient Apparition, and I feel like Virtus Pro are going to pick up Venge if it doesn't get banned here. Mm. Yeah, uh, both sides could actually look at Venge. I mean, there's a lot of potential with that hero, a lot of setup, and uh, obviously the big thing here would be breaking down the lasso with another swap. So. Uh, that'd be great, but I'm not sure if they're running this ET as support or as an offlaner. We've been seeing a lot of ET support recently, so that's almost the like when I see it, I'm like, it's probably filling that slot more often than not. But it definitely could be offlane, and or the puck could be offlane. In which case, you definitely want to p look to pick up the Venge, get the the long lost lovers back together. But um. Yeah, the side of X game, I kind of feel like there's a little bit of hubris in this draft. Like, this is, the like and the Weaver picks here, they definitely can work. Don't, don't get me wrong, they're not bad picks by any stretch. They bring a lot to the table, but there is a lot of less room for error up against Slark, up against Puck. So now we see the final core hero come out. It's going to be Slark, Puck, Necro in the Tricore, and I guess that does put Puck in the offlane, unless there's an aggro try, which I would not recommend. Yeah, and I mean, having to go offlane against the Ogre Magi, he's got a quick stun, like he can catch Puck before Puck can even phase shift, like if he shoots the orb to jump to, can maybe get stunned out, potentially. Will get zoned out a little bit. However, if Necrophos or Slark are dominating their lanes, it could force some early support rotations, which will give Puck a little bit easier of a time. Uh, but even still, Lycan and Weaver shouldn't have too much trouble laning against that Puck if it is indeed offlane. And I like the Necrophos pick. 
Yeah, it's pretty interesting. He brings a lot to the table, and one big thing about Lycan is tempo. He wants to be dis causing a lot of issues. He wants to be just kind of battering down the hatches. He wants to put pressure and limit your farming space. But if you get maybe, let's say, two Reaper Size kills on him in the first 20 minutes of the game, that's a lot of time that he's just not involved, where he's not able to farm, where he's not able to push, where he's not able to do what he wants to do. So I think that's going to be great. Uh, the ability to get kills on Weaver, obviously, when he's hit, uh, afflicted by the Reaper Scythe, it's in his teammates' hands to decide if he's going to be able to make it out of it. He can't just time-lapse out of that stuff. He's got to get some kind of mech support or something else because, yeah, it's it's going to be a pretty good way to just kind of cinch the win. But it's going to be G picking up the Necrophos and starting with a Null Tally double branch build, implying that he wants to actually go to the mid lane here. And I'm not sure about the matchup that we're going to see against most likely the Lycan. Yeah, I feel like Necrophos is going to be fine. One, he's got an awesome set. The new one from the chest. I think that's the Dota Cinema one as well, right? The Kaw. Either way. The uh, the Sadist, or not the Sadist, sorry. The Heartstopper Aura, it's just so hard to deal with. I, I've seen Necrophos just dominating lanes, uh, even dominating Razor, who's thought of as the lane dominator. I did, however, see last night when I was casting some of uh, the Sevo games for North America, I saw a Legion commander put up against the necrophos and it's funny actually because x game banned out that hero the legion did very very well got up the bottle had pressed the attack so basically taking that damage over time just by being in the lane wasn't much of an issue for the legion commander but we'll see how lycan will want to handle it 30 seconds to battle hmm. So, we will be seeing an early start here on the bottom lane from X game. Not sure about this move here. It's going to force a try versus try where both teams have some real strength. I think the ET can, uh, with an experienced player, do a lot of work here. And an experienced one might be a little bit uh, under pressure to do more than just stacking and pulling. But if they go for the aggro try, if they go for the 3v3 and they don't find first blood pickoff like this one, then... Uh, could be some issues. They go with the Fire Blast, though, not the Ignite. The Stomp will come through, and he might just be able to walk away with his Invis. Invis runes are generally pretty nice, so yeah, I think he might get away. Unless, uh, Sakuchi hits Invis now, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does. But the last right-click will be the Roshan kill. He snakes in, lets Rosh take a couple quick swipes, and he's able to get out of jail free this time. He will pass go, he will go back to the bottom lane, and, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the fact that he Unfortunately, he won't get 200 gold for free, but... No, no, no. No, 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 no. But, you know, you'll be able to get it over time. Just uh, got to be patient. Just gotta Anyways, he's, in, he's got a, in a good position, maybe block the wave out a little bit, get a better creep equilibrium. But either way, what do you think about this Fire Blast pickup from the Ogre over the Ignite? Well, I mean, it worked, right? It almost got them the first blood. If Weaver had just lit, went a little farther into the pit with the Sakuchi, he would have even found himself the kill. Uh, it's definitely not going to be as good for, for zoning someone out. As Slark did go for Pounce, so he wouldn't be able to uh, bring off the Ignite damage. So you can maybe force out some of the regen from this uh, defensive tri lane earlier. But I'm sure he'll be level 2 soon enough. Like, he's almost there. Mm -hmm. Well, if I have some issues on the mid lane here, not getting much as far as CS under tower even. And, uh, this lane yeah. sounds miserable, honestly, for Lycan. Yeah, I, I think that a little bit of it was a mechanical failure from Wadafaka, though. Like, I think there's two or three CS that he definitely could have gotten in addition to the two he's already acquired. But in either case, it is a tough lane, and uh, he's going to be setting out on the courier here, looking for his salve just to kind of get to the bottle range. Like, he knows he needs the bottle to keep spamming the wolves to control the runes, but for right now, just being pressured by this 2-1-0 Necro. Yeah, and also being pressured was the pull. Virtus Pro had uh, actually pulled through right now, and X Game came over and took a lot of that CS and brought the creep wave back into their lane. So it's going to push all the way to their tower. They'll get uh, the full experience from the wave that they feel uh, is uh, is theirs to take. And it was Virtus Pro that were too scared to fight. So respecting the strengths of X Games' aggressive tri lane. Yep, most definitely. And now we're going to see a potential skirmish down bottom. It is going to be a missed pounce onto Reeves here. Not even sure if you want to go on the Ogre here. Like, this guy's got 7 armor. He's got 3.2 HP regen without a tango up. And he's got the most HP of any of them. So, he could have definitely connected with the pounce, could have gotten a kill. But I think there was a lot of turnaround potential there for Mantis. Yeah, and I guess we'll look up top while bottom simmers down for a bit. Stallcat here is on the Bat Rider. He goes for the new school two rings of protection as he does find that 1v1 lane against the Puck. And it's Sadoi on the Puck who we talked about in the uh, 
might have a hard time in the offlane, but it turns out to be 1v1, so it is just a Puck versus Batrider. It's not a fun matchup, but clearly Puck is doing just all right. He's 12 and 1, oh. Batrider's 11 and 1. It gets a little sticky there with some Napalm. Bottom, though, there's a ton of action going down. BZZ is going to find the kill opening onto Ogre. The Skywrath is also going to fall. Looks like BZZ and Yol are going to have to retreat. Yeah, and, just uh, a... One for one down there. Big hot mess there, man. All of the spells going back and forth. Everybody clumped into a tiny area because there's really no AoE abilities. Like, there's Thunderstrike. That's about it. We're going to see BZZ glimpse back here. Does not have. He has the pounce after he uses Magic Stick, and he will be able to slip through. Mantis getting a couple more right clicks in, but it's not going to be enough to do the job. So, yeah, in this position, it's a, it's a little awkward. Okay, actually losing the Sav. Two Reeves here. He's going to fall back, Clarity up, and. That's a lot of region taken away from the Slurk that's going to be making it difficult for him to sustain. Meanwhile, Sky rotates top of the smoke, trying to pick off Batrider and uh, maybe give Sedoya a little bit of leverage here, but it does leave them very vulnerable down bottom. Yeah, I think they saw just how aggressive Stallcat was trying to get on Puck, and, and with that death, that's that's sometimes the missing in actions that don't get called, right? When someone dies, you just like mm. expect the team to realize it. And the fact that he smokes up and TPs there, trying to get a quick pick off on Stallcat, but... I don't know. For, for right now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And he also ran past the creeps. Or unless he still smoked when he went by. I'm not quite sure. I think he's going to put his sights on towards middle right now. Necrophos just hit level 6. So even an Arcane Bolt with the Reaper Scythe means Wadafaka is going to be dead for 30% longer. Big dive coming out. It's going to be really hard for BCZ to get out of this one. He is going to be... There might be no Echo Mana for Echo Stomp. He's going to have to jump all the way into the trees and they still see him. He has tangos. He has Magic Stick. But they will get the last right click <laughs> they need. The Shikuchi comes, or sorry, the Gemini comes through. And uh, yeah, that you have to expect it when you are rotating your Skywrath up top and you're trying to farm your lane with less than half HP. And now they're looking for Yol. The stun, it's going to go off. They have Ignite too. They're going to be taking a pretty big creep wave. Yol out of mana can't back. stomp. Equals very, very back. low. What He's dying doing? to the creeps, most definitely. No, not one most HP. definitely. Two. One HP. Maybe even one. HP. And BZZ is going to be going for denied. another deny to the neutral. So, man. One deny. So Midland, it's actually one to three right now. Waterfaka, amplified by the Ancient Seal. And he oh, is going to go down to the last head. Doesn't die to the ulti, Dawn though. Falls. So uh, just a, a decent increase to uh, G as he's able to benefit from that Sadist regen times 10. But either way, yeah, Lycan's having a really rough time in the mid lane. It's only made up for in part by X Games' dominance down bottom. I think Skywrath right now is saying uh, to Necrophos, like, really, you couldn't have just taken some of those tower hits? Maybe a bit of a blunder there by the Skywrath. Uh, Jotam, as he did die. Luckily, the Lycan was already dead, so maybe it's some gold given up, but it's not any experience towards the Lycan, who's pretty behind. That being said, Lycan is a hero He's still getting his levels quickly, and he can rebound very, very and fast. And they might even get the kill on God. He's playing so aggressive, and this is going to be really big for Lycan to, to be involved in some of that experience. Reeves, though, on the Ogre, will be the one to pick up the kill. So, I mean, this is just good control uh, from x -Gain. These supports have always done work wherever they've been. Now Mantis will get some oh, damage. Oh, silence. No Shikuchi for you. Jotam had been missing from the lane for a while, finally comes back and standing there on the high ground. Weaver thinks he can get more aggressive than, uh, well, obviously he was able to. The silence comes out and they bring him down. It's uh, now, I don't even know what the score is because there are two, it's, so it's three to five, but we're just, I think we're just going to go with four to six. Sure enough. I mean, just a lot of action no matter how you look at it. Only six and a half minutes in the game and it's already kind of a bloodbath here. But with uh, the aggro try, that's kind of what they set themselves up for. Not uh, these calm, uh, really well calculated rotations. It's just, uh, I don't know, a slugfest really. But the end result is that Stallcat is going to be Rock of these Tranquils and Bassy looking for an opportunity here on the Necrophos. They can go for a stun initiation into the Lasso, but they need a plus one. They get the plus one, but they don't get the range on that Flaming Lasso. Ooh. It's in fact a turnaround from Sedoi. Yeah, nice awareness by Sedoi just to be there in the middle lane. Saw them looking to get aggressive. Drops the coil, shuts down any aggression. Jotam, unfortunately, his hero doesn't have much life, so it's going to fall as well. Ooh, it nice is still two for one. Now. Mantis is going to maybe continue to go, but no, he'll back off. Doesn't want to cross the river alone. He, he probably learned from his uh, mistakes or his over-aggression down here in the bottom lane a couple seconds ago. Yeah. So, I mean, that's Ogre down for over 40 seconds. G already getting two Reaper Scythe kills. Or sorry, no, one of them wasn't actually a kill. Yeah, it was slightly after. Scythe, but nevertheless, utilizing it to 
net some frags, and that's going to be putting VP in, in a nice little advantage in that regard. But still, this Weaver has found a lot of nice kills. 3-1-1 one, one is his KDA. His CS value, though, only at 20. Yeah, and just even though it's really looking at net worth, it's still not doing too badly for him. He's at 2,800, and looking at the number one position in the entire game, it's about 4,000 net worth for the Necrophos in the middle lane. Checking out his CS, he's got 51 also involved in uh, three kills. I guess Weaver's been in four, and, and the Puck doing very well, too. Obviously, with a great timed rotation towards the middle lane just a couple seconds ago. Also, 36 last hits, five denies, and will start trying to disrupt some of Stallcat's pulls on the Batrider as he found an invis, has coil. Firefly has just run out, so Doi might go for this. It's a very, very difficult solo kill. Puck doesn't have that much damage by himself, especially at this early stage here. Not even power treads available, so I think it's just going to be scouting for vision unless Jotham gets close enough to contribute. But now the case, they know what's what, and it looks like they do want to go on luck in here. Yeah, they found two. They found the better prize, even. And here's the rotation. Jotam and even Yol is not too far away on the Elder Titan. It might be able to lend a spirit. There's a silence. Also going to be amplifying a lot of Puck's damage here. And with the right clicks, the right clicks don't do quite as much as he's got eight armor, but they will be able to bring him down. Yep, so a bit of frustration for Waterfuck. He doesn't really find an easy place to farm here. Didn't have a great laning experience, and now in his own jungle he's being routed. But that's what you got to do against the Lycan. And we're, we're seeing that in full force. BCC down bottom is taking a lot of harassment here, but every once in a while can just go on into the trees, heal back up, and is able to keep himself relatively healthy here. Uh, either way, yeah, it's going to be G to farm up some stacks in the western part of his jungle. He got a double stack, and now I think just a single, but in either case, he's very close to a mechanism, which while it may be extremely mana intensive, and there are no arcane boots to speak of to help him out, oh, he's still going to be able to Get benefit from this status regen to do two things in a fight. Essentially, he has to make the choice of whether to use the mech or the scythe in the fight. And if he uses the scythe and gets a kill, then he can use the mech thereafter. Yeah, it's actually, well, it's going to be a big deal in one more level. Because scythe level one, not too much, but when it costs 340 mana at rank two, it's ridiculous. And you mm -hmm. really barely have enough mana for the mech death pulse and the reaper scythe, if you even do. And then 500 mana for rank 3 Reaper Scythe. So yeah, it's definitely uh, sort of a nerf to the Necrophos. Who did he actually? He didn't actually get anything. I guess they just switched that the 30% uh, added time, or 30 second added time, is always there with the Ags. What do you mean switch anything? Oh no, that was just the last buff, right? They gave the uh, 30 seconds The last extra. buff ch changed from 30% 30 to 30 30 seconds. 30 percent to 30 flat, so it made it better in the early game. Yeah, okay. insanely good in the early game. Like, the Instead of late being game, dead for 7, you're dead for yeah. 37. Yeah, it's, it's a, a level change. 25 effect no matter what. But, um, yeah, it's going to be the Weaver barely slipping through that one. He's going to bottle up, but he should not time lapse that one. Actually, almost goes Ooh. down to the orb. So Doi will be able to connect the coil onto one before being glimpsed back. And Equal is in a tough spot here. Yeah, they're going to have to dive the tower for this one. BZZ going to get stunned up by Reeves. They'll throw the silence on him. Now the Shadow Dance, first of the game coming out. Still trying to chase these supports, chasing very, very far. Four members of Virtus Pro down here. It's Sedoi still farming in the offlane. Now Mantis is going to run back through. He's full HP. Might look to re-engage. Reeves is still here. Has quite a few Fire Blasts that he can still throw out. Trying to get some tower damage as well for their troubles. Meanwhile, Lycan in the middle lane doing what Lycan does. He's catching back up. He just took down the middle tower. Will shapeshift back to the jungle to farm even faster. Up to 50 last hits now. Still trailing his uh, mid adversary by 32, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm really unsure about why the Batrider went for the solo kill on Puck now. It looks like there's going to be a second person involved, but still not being able to find the target they're looking for. But I kind of feel like if the Batrider hadn't wasted the lasso on Puck, when he definitely couldn't kill him. Like, he only got him down to 70 HP by the end of their skirmish. Uh, like, if he had been able to rotate with that lasso and been able to turn around that tower dive on the bottom lane, that would have been immense. Now, there's going to be a stun coming out from Reeves onto Yul. He's going to get this Echo Stomp, though, and it is going to be dodged by Mantis. He can go for a huge dive here. Geminate right click, brings him down. Oh, the last hit. Yeah, double damage. Nice, nice rune to have right there, and, and good awareness to dodge the sleep. And he'll even time lapse in. Get silenced oh, and killed! Another good positioning by Jotam. He's uh, the thorn in this Weaver's side this game. The second kill he's got with Mantis really having no idea that it was about to happen. 
And the tower, he does get the tower though. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like you would almost say that's fine because the tower lasted for Weaver is absolutely immense after getting that kill. Now it's gonna be Stalk out on the mid lane, bringing down G. He has the mechanism that will only delay his death here. Death Bulls, Mech, bring himself up a bit, but they can keep chasing this with the Napalm. Their reinforcement coming in from Yol, he wants to go for the stomp. And it's gonna be BZZ blinking in, looking for Stalkat for a return kill. And in the well, end, nobody will be going down. It might be Stallcat. BZZ still on the chase. He pounced over the ancient cliff or crevasse, whatever you want to call it. Now he's here. He'll shadow dance up. The Aura going to run through. It's Yol that'll actually find the kill on the Batrider. So after all of that in the middle lane, a lot of wand charges there or stick charges there on Necrophos with the bottled mech and Death Pulse was able to keep him alive. And now looking bottom, I think Mantis and Reeves want to get another kill. This time he might find the revenge here, the multicast on the Jonam. Not a lot of chance for Jonam to live through this, Ooh. but Sadoi might be able to avenge him almost instantly. Oh, maybe not. The burst, it wasn't quite enough, especially to bring down Reeves, this guy. Tanky hero. But here's Ooh. God rotating down on the Necrophos, the god of death. And I think they're going to be bringing down Reeves. Uh, BZZ's yeah, there thanks. as well. He's made his way back down from the Ancients where he killed the Batrider. And with that, they might look to push the Tier 1. BZZ might try to chase out the Weaver. No, he's going for the D Ward here. He's obviously passive disabled, so he knows where the wards are. Yeah, and I mean, they had that sentry down for a decent amount of time prior to that. So it just happened to be placed down right within range. They're able to take care of it. They're a little preemptive. A de warding going on. Like is gonna take the top tier one with equal, putting up this very nice southwest plateau ward over here on the radiant side, and that's a uh, pretty impactful for allowing Lycan to safely put pressure the next tower here, the tier two. In fact, he had his shapeshift active here. Didn't catch exactly why he needed that, but in either case, just a quick cooldown, and uh, he has the Vlad's reach on his mana. Gotta go fast, man. Probably oh, yeah. wow. Sedra Ward right onto the Invis Mantis. He's going to go for the Stomp here. Can they follow it up with the Pounce? I think they can. There's going to be a last on the other side. Jotham is definitely going down, but how well can they pressure Mantis without the Reaper side? It looks like not sufficiently. Sedoi, though, cleaning house. He will be able to bring down the Disruptor. Looking for Stalkat as well. They trade the supports, and now they look to pursue onto the Batrider. But he blinks out. The Weaver keeps Shikuching, but a long-range Pounce from BZZ. That'll connect. They drop another sentry down. Let's see if he can get out of there. He's actually running back through the sentry, but he's too fast. Oh. That's almost enough. BCC will go in. He's got the blink completed. He'll blink with the dark pack damage, and it's going to be enough. And now oh, already he's back away. He was what chasing the Batrider, and Reeves is still standing here. Now the coil. He finds the Batrider at the end anyways. Sadoi proving that patience is a virtue. God will find one. BZZ picks up the double kill. The tier one has fallen in middle, and now they're going for the tier two here as things go wrong for X game in that last exchange. Just a little bit, man. I don't know. That tower denied seemed a little bit greedy there. They really just lost so much with the blink pursuit of the Slark. Really on-point movement from BZZ. They were able to clean stuff up, and obviously sadoi has been a working wonders on this puck, so being able to, to get those combos off to get the lockdown they needed and now bring themselves up to 14 kills. Really impactful. Up on the top lane, Mantis will just keep farming away. But, I mean, this is a Weaver with Bracer, Treads, Magic Wand at 16 minutes. Like, he's not really finding those big items. He doesn't have that much space to farm with the Lycan greedily lapping up whatever creeps he can. And with their towers now being under siege. Yeah, just a quick item check, and well, actually we see it already just being completed. And we might not even have time for it, because this game's kind of a bloodbath. So do I up top, doing some fighting. Along with the Weaver with the Ogre, they've been looking to brawl all game. Sadoi will live, and now it's Yol who probably won't. He's stuck here in the kinetic field. Never mind, BZZ is going to back him up. Oh, Equal oh, drops oh, a oh, nice oh, static oh, storm, oh, the lasso, oh. pulling Slark back into it. They almost knock him up on the cliff, but he gets the Shadow Dance off. He needs to try to dodge the fire. He can't quite do it. He will fall. Maybe it's the Sakuchi, actually, or the bug that brings him down. As Weaver finds a kill on Slark, now Reeves will bring down the Skywrath. While, meanwhile, Ogre, Vlad's Necronomicon, so he's getting his core items. Wow, yeah, that was another cut your losses play. Like, you just need to see, okay, I, in the case before it was you can't deny the tower. In this case, it's you can't stop people from dying. They're going to be going down, and you're just going to be going with them if you commit. Now it's going to be G with the Aghanims up, but he's going to be run down a little bit here. There should be plenty to dissuade them from actually going in, but they will be taking some nice creep camps for their trouble. So igniting that, fire flying that down, and yeah, G is going to be a little bit sad about the loss of those creeps.
Yeah, having on Aghanims, though, he does get a lot of mana for that, and that's kind of alleviating the uh, using mechanism with the Reaper's Scythe problem. It's still, like, over 500 mana, so it's half of his mana pool to use that combo. But it's definitely doable every time. Rank 16, or level 16, rank 3 ultimate, still going to be a bit of a strain on his mana pool. As uh, some other items, what else we got? We got the Blink on Slark that we saw unveiled. Blink on Sedoi, no surprise that he's got that already. He's been playing a fantastic game. Uh, the Necro, the Vlads, there's a Blink on Batrider. He's had it for a while. And other than that, I mean, Mantis turned that Bracer into a Drums, but there's nothing on the side really of X good game. Good silence. And just Weaver just gets decimated. Jeez, that is absolutely insane. Reeves is going to be most likely pursued with the Blink Pounce coming up in three seconds here. BZ has been pretty on point here, but Lycan is waiting around the corner in the woods, looking to bring down Little Red Riding Hood. Jotum goes down. Sadoi will be lassoed up, and they're going to be taking a lot of damage here. BZZ needs another right-click against him. The Blink Dagger is disabled by the Urn. The mech is only doing a little bit to delay it. Finally, he goes down, and now G's in a really, really sticky wicket. Yeah, I don't know if he wanted to go in to save that. I think uh, Virtus Pro needs to learn. You already touched on it a little bit. They need to learn the motto, don't save the dead. Uh, they give up a lot of kills there and just pretty much squandered the kill advantage that they did have. It's now 18 to 17. That was a 4-4-2, although it was, a, I think, a buyback time lapse. in. it was definitely a buyback. I'm not sure about the time lapse from Mantis. Uh, but 4 for 2 with one buyback on X game, definitely worth it to put them back in this game. And just like that, with everybody dead, with the Wolves, it looks like the Necro is maybe used in the fight, but they're pushing down this tier 2. The Fortification goes out now, so it actually won't quite go down, at least without a fight. They'll glimpse back Sadoi, and maybe they're going to look to re-engage here. Lasso's got a 30 oh, second cooldown, nice Lycan is very, very low, he's trying to TP out, he will actually make it. Goes even back to the tier 2, he's got a Vlads, he'll heal up. So, uh, a nice little play there from the Puck. Sadoi was actually used his illusory orb before he got glimpsed back, so as soon as he got sent to the well, he just uh, hit his jaunt and he was right back in the action. So that was a cute little play. But uh, Equal, not going to be able to get out of this one now that the Stomp has come through. He did his best, a couple of kinetic fields to, and Ooh. glimpses to try to keep himself alive, but end of the day, it's just going to be another little pick for a support. He's actually died four times this game, which is not even close to the highest. Uh, his Ogre counterpart is up to six and the Skyrath Mage is up to seven. So yeah, uh, a lot of pain being dished out either way, but I really do feel like the last one was yeah, for Virtus Pro an example of where they need to learn to pick their battles. When they are superior, which is a lot of fights, it's great for them to get aggressive and great for them to get involved, but there are plenty of engagements where they can be outgunned. There's still a lot of kill potential on X game, but we will see the Blink Pounce onto Reeves, and they're actually both stuck in trees, unable to get at each other. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think Reaper Scythe will take care of it. That's that's one dead ogre. He's going to be down for over a oh, minute. Oh, man, it's Courier Snipe. Oh, Mantis finding a nice little opportunity to just Shikuchi chase, geminate it down, but it's going to be a Blink Pounce to look to bring down Batrider. That doesn't connect, and it's just going to be an easy tier 2 tower, as there's pretty much nothing you can do once your ogre is down for as long as he is. Yeah, I'm surprised ogre even gets caught. Lycan was doing uh, his job. He had the wolves scouting up on the cliff. Like, they knew that at least two, three people were around, and he was trying to hide in the trees. Maybe he didn't think that Beardus Pro was going to be able to scout him out, but uh, obviously they were, and now they're going to try to make that uh, their claim to the tier 2 tower here in middle. It's going to go down. The Wolves looking for the deny, and actually no one will even find the last hit. But here's Batrider jumping in. He'll find John. I'm just bringing down the Skywrath. That's definitely going to secure Mantis' life in this team fight now that that silence isn't here. And I think that's going to put Virtus Pro in retreat. And, and actually, the X-Claim not even going to chase. So Yeah, we, really weak play from the Disruptor there. Could have done a lot, and then he doesn't ca catch anything in Static or Kinetic, and doesn't glimpse anybody back to pursue. They feel very tentative about their pursuit in this state. The Lycan, he's gradually building up his items, but at least at the moment, he doesn't really feel confident in his own right-click potential. And yeah, unless they take Roche within the next five or six minutes, I would have to say that VP just really aren't certain by any stretch that they're going to be able to win fights right now at least not without a really good lasso they do however have the geometry site that was purchased by the disruptor here equal so they're gonna to have to make use of that as they try to look for map control yeah waterfuck is gonna go up top push out the lane can maybe try to finish off that tier two he's got the necro three so even the necro wolves could probably finish it but it looks like Someone's gonna get in a bit of a fight down here in the bottom lane in the Radiant Jungle. It's Sadoi going on to Equal. I don't think Equal's getting out of this one. No, most definitely not. Tries to throw the glimpse. 
just displaces Sadoi a little bit. And, and now VP, I mean, everyone has made the movement down here, so you know they want to push this tier two. There it is. I was wondering when that Blink Dagger would come out. It's a really important tool for Necro in the fast-paced metagame. There's so many mobile heroes in this one in particular. You got Shapeshift, the Shikuchi, you're uh, jumping around with the Slark and the Puck. You want to be able to keep up with the fight, and Necro is not a quick hero by any stretch. 340 and mess with the Treads. Quite the opposite. Yeah, he, the Blink Dagger puts him in the action, so they're going to be able to go for quick pickoffs, and uh, there's a good chance they'll be able to Reapers the Weaver in the next engagement, which would be a huge one to take out. As we mentioned, there's the possibility of buyback time lapse that is negated, as well as the fact that you just don't give them the chance to bring themselves back up to full HP. Yep, and the push on the bottom lane will be successful. Slark going to grab the last hit on that one. Meanwhile, Batrider trying to get some intel. Bring down some of the creeps in the radio jungle. Maybe hoping for a stack. Oh, Doesn't Mantis! Find it. And actually, that's what I'm talking about. I, I missed it. Off. I missed the unveiling, but we see it. The blink in with the Reaper Scythe. And just jumping, getting that coil silence off, and that's pretty much all she wrote on this guy. He doesn't have that much HP to work with, no BKB. So as soon as they connect with those spells, unless there's something like a static storm right on top of everyone, he is just a dead bug walking. Oh, this is why I wasn't invited to the summit for uh, the camera. Nice observing, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well. Dude, I, I missed actually quite a few kills well, at the I event do. itself, but it was over the entire like course of the event, so I, I can't really complain too much. I didn't miss more than two kills. Actually, there was one game I think I missed three kills, but other than that, I didn't miss any more than two kills per game, and I felt pretty good about that. Seems pretty reasonable, especially even in a game like this, where there's been, what, 40 kills in 24 minutes, almost two kills a minute. A lot of kills to miss. I think that's number one for me. But uh, how many of those games did you observe? Because it was unclear who was observing. It was... Of, unless they were flaming Mott, which was every time. They, they Yeah, they flamed Mott every time, no matter if I was observing or not. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was about 50-50 uh, as far as for the first few days, and then the last couple days we were able to double it up when we had the picture-in-picture -picture stuff. Yeah, and that was cool. We were, we were both doing all the games at that point. All right, well, we're going to see... Uh, this is the Yule Scepter done on Sedoi, putting up nice that Rider. That one's better. Two-man coil. Static Storm going to segregate Virtus Pro away from X Game and down the hill. As a result of that, they'll actually get the kill on Sedoi, and they're going to try to continue to chase out the Lycan and the Batrider. And Reeves and Equal leaving up through the Roche pit area. And actually, Fearless Pro, even with the uh, with that coil, but the fact that the Static Swarm was so well placed, they don't get anything. Yeah. DCZ maybe goes a little too far. He'll Dark Pack, now he'll go for the Shadow Dance. They're still chasing way past the river without their puck. They do still have God. Mech coming off a cooldown in about 12 seconds. Reaper Scythe is available for him if they want to try to use it here. Batrider's going to jump in last, so he'll pull God back. Virtus Pro have definitely gone too far. Crossing the river without their entire team deep into uh, enemy territory. Maybe not the best call. Maybe maybe they should rename their team to Silence because they've just gone too far. Yes. But, uh, yeah, no, the last team fight there, the Disruptor put out a really good connect static. Didn't actually catch anyone, but that's not the point. The point is that he was able to break apart the a team fight in a small choke point where really Virtus Pro couldn't come to the aid of two of their core heroes. I mean, taking two core heroes away from their support staff is absolutely immense, and they're able to get a lot out of that. Mantis, though, will be going low. Will he be going down? Yes, PZZ jumping in for the kill. So Waterfuck is going to have to make his retreat here. Dream Coil, though, uh -oh. is locked in place. Cage he match with Roche. He tries to run away, breaks the coil. BZZ misses the bounce. Oh, oh the Dark Pack, though, the AoE, it'll still get him. John, him in a battle. Support on support right now. They'll trade out equal strength right now for those supports. 25-22, BZZ in the fight of his life. Ogre and Weaver have been using that buddy system all game. It proves a little bit stronger than the Slark. Right there, they'll bring him down. Sadoi checking the pit with that orb, making sure no one's still doing the Roche. I don't know who would be doing it. Maybe Ogre to tank or something, but everyone will back off now. Yeah, and uh, there was a nice little fall through. The Bat Rider was able to just run down the Elder Titan in the tail end of that fight, so not able to get away from that one. And then the Bat Rider just TPs back after the fact, so does his due diligence in finding the kills and still has the lasso of the gem. Uh, everything he needs to find another one in the near future. But in either case, it was a pretty awesome fight for X Game there. First, they break it up with the Disruptor ulti in the 
Radiant Jungle. And then they get a VP to stretch themselves a little thin. It does cost them a buyback on the Weaver to get back into it, but when they do, they're able to come out pretty far ahead in that specific engagement. The problem is that Weaver is really their, their number one. Like the Lycan, he's going to be able to do a decent amount here, but with the BKB, the Necro 3, these are not items that are going to cause a Slark much cause for concern now that he's ramping up to this full hard carry position. He's got the Blink, he's got the Scotty, and he's looking to just stick to you no matter what. So I, they need more oomph. They need some right-click damage from the Weaver, and right now with him buying back twice this game, he's actually in sixth place. Yeah, he's uh, the lowest core hero. I mean, even the support Elder Titan is at 6.5k, maybe a, a little due to the tower advantage, but even that's not that severe. Fearless Pro with two more towers standing right now. Uh, Elder Titan's just been very, very involved in the 12 kills. He has died five times, uh, but looking at Weaver, Weaver's died six times, and two of those we know were buybacks, so definitely hurting him. He can maybe buy the... I don't, I don't know what he wants to go for here. Do you think he still goes for the Lincolns? Or do um, you, you rather, Weaver, rather if you just do see like Lincoln's right now? You have no damage for the rest like of the maybe game. Maybe BKB Deso or something. At least you get the some of the damage from the BKB or just Deso, the glass cannon. Oh, fucking maelstrom! It's anything with damage. Like it doesn't really matter that specifically, but anything where you can actually like do so something. So rapier is what you're saying. Directly. Obviously, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna lose or radiance that plus sixty-five damage. Pretty sweet, but yeah, I mean he needs durability too because like right now the puck is just gunning for him in every fight and the reaper side follows that up, but even like a hardcore farm weaver wouldn't be able to avoid that fully. Like you can't, like you said, Lincoln's like, what's that going to do against blink waning rift and then they use like a four staff on you and then get the reaper side. Like, That's a bit much. Oh, Batrider's in some trouble. Stallcat's trying to go for the ward. Come on, get the ward. That's what you came for, Stallcat. Get it. Oh, he dies. Nope. Nice earth splitter. It I guess. It landed. <laughs> it was just on one person, but... It's uh, very shiny. It is. It's a cool ability. Now BZZ. Mana being drained out here by the Necro Threes. The sentries will go down. The ward actually does get cleaned up. And X game throw a smoke? Some of them get uh, broken. Actually, I don't know if Reeves maybe just wasn't in it. And they'll retreat out with the smoke. I don't know if they want to maybe try to re-engage with that. But with Batrider being down, no lasso. I don't think you want to start a fight 4v5. If anything, you want to start at 5v4. X game having the man advantage, maybe the pick with the lasso nope. to give you that advantage. Essentially because they're minus one in the fights anyways, right? Because as soon as the Reaper Scythe goes down, that's yeah. somebody that's completely deleted from the game for an extended period here. So there is no such thing as a 5v4 for I mean, them. John Even if they have a number Mantis advantage. 1v1 at the start yeah. of the fight too. Mm. Yeah, if there's a number advantage, it's going to be for VP in all of these fights here. This Necro is farmed as all get out here. He's got Ags. He's looking for his Shivas and yeah, he's in a, a really good position for that. We are going to see this Mithra Hammer come out for Weaver. Very happy about that decision. But BCC will kind of scout him out as he blinks. I think he, like, pounced, he picked up the Invis rune. Really weird. Did he D ward up? Oh, no, he doesn't even... What am I saying? There's no sentries or anything. Doesn't have a gem. He's got an Eye of Scotty. He completed that actually a couple minutes ago. So, actually, maybe more than a couple minutes ago. He's already got 2,300 gold on top of that. So, Slark looking for that next big item. You think maybe he just goes for a BKB? At least he can chase down the Ogre, can uh, take away the Oh, they the see the smoke. Oh, the wolf sees it. Really good scouting coming in from Wadafaka. Keep Keeps those wolves up. They see the smoke, and they can play and respond appropriately. As to the Slark's items here, um, BKB seems almost too defensive here. Like, the BKB is only going to nullify this Disruptor ulti, maybe some damage from the Ogre there. I'd like to see him just hard right-clicking. He could go for the Basher, Basher if you're yeah. confident. Otherwise, get a, I don't know, a Hyperstone and uh, look to, okay, here's the smoke breaking. Oh, blink away for the Batrider. Batrider going to force staff over. Batrider has a gem as well, but it won't help through the Shadow Dance. BZZ doing what he can to stay oh, alive, but he will fall. Meanwhile, God on the back end will find a kill on Weaver. Dead for 104 seconds. Jot him. Gonna get blown up. Sadoi here dropping the Dream nice. Coil onto a couple, actually onto two. And I think he's gonna have to retreat. He'll take the orb. Stallcat doesn't quite go down. He's very, very low, under 200 HP. And well, even with Virtus Pro losing two, I feel like the Weaver being down for over 100 seconds is pretty big detriment. We talked about he really needs those damage items. And now he's not gonna be farming for the next almost two minutes. Like, Yola's just still in here. Kill. Like, there's. Staying, overstaying their welcome so long, but end of the day, nobody's going down still. They really oh, would just want another pickup. Uh, 
Uh, it's still going to be a very nice turn of gold, though. Uh, the Weaver does lose out about 480, but overall the team wins out by uh, a 1,500 gold advantage. So very important to get those kills to kind of shift the net worth back towards uh, them a little bit, taking down both the Slark and the Skywrath. So the Slark will be coming up in five seconds. The Weaver is still having to wait for 40. But Waterfucker looks to maybe just well Roche? jump right to the Roche pit, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's nowhere else you're going with that one. So he smokes right in. He's got the wolves up. They're at Roche's door, and they're a knocking, but here comes the ET stomp. Oh, man, the Astral Spirit. Yol, just with the sense, he's like, hey, I'm farming, you know, jungle camps, but hey, I'm just going to put the spirit oh, to the Roche nice. as well. So good awareness by Yol. It does kind of give away where he is standing, so they'll jump in, lasso him, but now there's no lasso here for the Slark. Uh, it looks like they won't need it to kill the Skywrath. The guy yeah, just pick him apart. This still blowing really up. This a good movement from X Game supports. Like, what if like, uh, he kind of manned up a little bit, but it's the supports that give him the opportunity to do so. Now it's going to be Reeves TPing away. They can bring him down after the Yules, but they're kind of shifting targets a lot here, and Reeves will give them enough trouble for an extended period of time. Now, on to Watafaka. They glimpse back onto the Slark and the BKB away so that Watafaka isn't pounced. And the Kinetic Field again, breaking things up. Now, gonna take some real damage. Watafaka's shapeship will n will be enough? Oh my gosh, at 10 HP, he gets away. And they are gonna be just in all-out pursuit mode. They don't get the kill they're looking for, but maybe they can get one more. But I'm not seeing it. All the TPs, everybody survives. Only the Ogre was able to be brought down, and they're back in the pit. Poor Ogre. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to steal it. The Radiant going for the Roshan steal here. Uh, who is the buyback by Puck even to try to secure this? So XM got to expect that something is up. I mean, there's not just a buyback oh, yeah, no, they have the for no there. reason. So, yeah, oh, the Wolf's even in there. Yeah, I'd like to see a gem investment for Virtus Pro, especially when they were more ahead. Uh, could have been, actually, they're still fairly far ahead. 7,500 gold, 5,000 experience. They're trying to bring down the Roche. Who's Yule set it up? It's Mantis. They'll find the silence on him. God oh. going further. Oh, Reaper Scythe, but the Yule's up. He's not going to take any damage from that. Now Stallcat comes out with the lasso, pulling back God up to the high ground. Mantis will fall, trying to deny to the Ancients. The neutrals have got their hands dirty this game. Uh, but Mantis will go down. Both cores are dead right now. I did not want to open the shop right there. Clicking on the secret shop. They're still trying to fight. God completely out of mana, so he just needs to run away. But BZZ is going to go back in. He's going to try to re-engage Sadoi there as well. As they look for Reeves, Coil's going to drop onto two. Stallcat going down this time, probably just to the AoE Dark Pact. It looks like they were slept up from a great stomp from Yol. Reeves is down. Gosh. Mantis is down. BZZ oh, looking for the Rampage, but it's going to be Necrophos. Gets that kill. All right. Heartstopper Aura. OP. Slark is just rocking this 84 bonus GG. damage, and they just call it here. That was the third, fourth buyback from Weaver, too? Yeah, that is at least the third buyback. He has had a very rough game. He's felt like he needs to be involved in all these fights. He needs to be involved in these fights twice over in some cases, because most of them start off with him getting silenced, maybe one extra nuke and then being reapers and that's just what you expect from the draft but on top of that the fact that they were able to limit his farm when he was uh, on the bottom lane there the aggro try didn't run over vp by any stretch the fights were very heavily contested and yeah x game they just weren't able to get enough out of their cores like their support play was insane the way disruptor was able to break up fights with his abilities uh, the quick picks from ogre after he got the agonim scepter like they got a lot out of those three heroes but the core heroes just couldn't do enough. The GPM on the Lycan and the Weaver, neither one of them breaking 400, and they weren't able to take it late game against the Slark. Yeah, I feel like x Game though, did still put up a, a pretty good fight. I mean, looking at their recent game history, they are just losing and losing and losing, and even to much, much lesser teams than Virtus Pro. So I think they put up a good fight today. Sure, the Weaver and the Ogre was a lot of fun to watch, but actually, uh, there's a lot of games today. And coming up next is Empire. The Empire is about to strike back, and we're going to see X Game one more time. So Empire gets to come back, and X Game, let's see what they can do. If they can, That's a big upset. If X Game can come into this next game, Empire super happy to be playing again. And if Empire lose, who knows what happens. And then up after that, we've got Virtus Pro, Four Anchors, uh, Hellraisers, Navi, Cloud9, Polar, and a bunch of other games. So hopefully you enjoyed this cast. This is Star Ladder Season 11. You're watching here on Beyond the Summit. We might, uh, depending if China's over, which I think it is, I think we're going to go to Dota Star Ladder underscore EN on Twitch. So make sure to follow us over there. But before we go, I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter at Heliumbrella. Blaze here. 
at Blaze Casting. Stick around. <laughs>